Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Today we're going to be checking out a new artist on the channel that a bunch of you have been recommending, but really it's my choice because I've heard her sing once before and I just loved it. So the artist is Hailstorm and the lead singer, her name is Lizzie Hale, but the band is actually comprised of her and her brother and a couple more people. So it's kind of cool. You got a little bit of family time there. Uh, this band was originally formed, I guess, when Lizzie and her brother were in middle school. So that, that was a particularly cool tidbit. They both apparently took a piano and then he went in the direction of drums and she went in the direction of guitar and vocals later. So the song we're going to look at today is called I Miss the Misery. This is really a way for me to get back into Hailstorm. Here's to Us is the song that I remember from before. And it was just a great song to rock out on, had very powerful vocals that I remember. And I loved the message of it too. So I'm really looking forward to getting to hear her again and get to dive in deep to the music. Let's get to it. Uh, uh, okay, we're probably going to go back to the beginning and listen to this one more time. Um, I had forgotten how much grit she has in her vocal. You know, it, that's like, it's almost like, uh, it almost sounds like fraying the edge of the vocal, but I don't think she's doing that. I think this is just her natural timbre. It doesn't um, sound like it's really uh, dangerous or, or like it's causing a lot of damage or something like that, because like, it doesn't sound like it's super pressurized. It does sound really powerful though, and it's exciting to hear a sound that has that much power and the grit at the same time. I really like that combo. Um, I also, uh, I was listening to a little bit of the production behind it and that's really caught my ear already. I, I think it was in the O's. I heard some doubling of her voice. Maybe she did like several takes of that track to give a double sound to it, but it sounded like I had some on both sides of the headphones very clearly. But then when she started in, her voice was a lot more center uh, maybe like just like a real mono sound there and it sounded a little bit closer. So maybe they recorded her further from the mic or maybe added a little pre-delay on the O's and then uh, maybe she was closer for her verse. I'm not sure, um, but it sounds, it sounds really cool. I like what they've done with the production on her vocals. Okay, ah, back to the beginning. I love the lyrics of this. Uh, sometimes lyrics grab me more than other times. She's got really good diction on them, so I can understand them pretty well. I did read them ahead of time. I usually read the lyrics of things ahead of time just to do a brief scan in case. Uh, whoa, these are powerful. Like thinking about missing the misery instead of the person in the relationship. It's true. People become addicted to sort of the ups and downs and drama in relationships fairly often. 
and just that the thrill of that right essentially i've been there i've done that i get it um this is i feel like this is very human and it speaks to some of the most emotional times in our lives so well these lyrics are on fire okay let's keep going let's go back a little bit go Wow, she can take that grit up so high in her voice. I really love, she's got a great powerful belt. And I love hearing how high she can take this up. This like, it almost sounds reminiscent of a metal scream sometimes, but I think it's just real true grit in her voice. Her placement of her voice is so sassy. It's so, it's like so bitey. She, she, um, she sings like right here. She doesn't even like let it get up into like the high sparkly area, though it sounds like she has some openness there to try and give more dimensions to the sound. But she's like right here. It's almost like her voice is coming out of her teeth. I love it. It's, it's like gnarly. That's par probably part of why the overall feeling you get is just so raw and, uh, and angry. Oh, it's great. I, I love the way that she goes up to Hertz. If I had a student doing that without a background and lots of singing through grit, I might worry. To, to be really honest, it goes up. It has a lot of edge on it. Um, not sure where that's being made, honestly. Uh, like usually when I hear that kind of grit, I'll say like, oh, that's probably going to be false folds. But I'm not entirely positive about that. Um, but it doesn't sound... Like, I don't hear fluctuations in it that make me think like, oh, she's about to pop a vocal cord. Sounds like it's more sustained. And it also sounds like it's really got, uh, like it's coming from her gut. So it sounds like you've got some really good breast support underneath it. So she's not having too much pressure underneath the larynx, which would probably cause some eventual damage. Um, so it sounds very sustainable, I guess is the overall thing to say. I'm really interested in the way the music video has... This black and white time, it looks like the concert is in black and white. And then her outside delivering the song, that looks like that's in color. And I'm trying to figure out what the reasoning is behind that. I think maybe it's just to help us understand that these are two different scenes that were being shot, but I'm not sure. Um, but it's definitely interesting to see the movement of her and the movement of the camera combined with the color choices. I'll try to like discern what's happening there a little bit more uh, just to let you guys know what I think. It might be totally wrong, but I'll keep looking at it. Guys, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna keep looking at the video, but look at this. <gasps> She's showing so much teeth. So usually, um, for a lot of classical singing, um, or even a lot of musical theater, I will not encourage people to raise their top lip. Um, that can bring this, it can bring a lot of extra tension into the sound, but it can work in some cases if you want to get the sound like more up here. And what did I say? Sounds like she's singing almost like into her teeth sometimes. And if you look at her mouth shapes, you can actually see part of why that's happening. She's pulling the lip up here. It gets the sound a little more focused on that area. I've seen a couple other mouth shapes. She really uses not just opening her mouth, but she uses her lips a lot, which
which makes me think that it really, she has got a very intentional focus in the front of her mouth. Let's go back and let's see if you can watch that. Even the way she sings blame me there, she sounds like she's singing it through her teeth. So instead of saying blame, she goes like blame. And I think that that, she's so fierce. Maybe that's the word for her, fierce. It's kind of incredible. Um, listen to the sound of blame and see if you can identify that her mouth is closed when she sings blame me instead of blame. Um, it, it sounds like it's more curious, essentially. It's the bad things, the way you hate me. I miss the scream and the way that you blame me. Oh, I didn't actually realize she has she has in the music video. Uh, and obviously when she's singing outside like this, I don't think that she's actually uh, being recorded. There would be too much atmospheric things that were getting in the way, and it doesn't look sh like she's got a good miking system around her. But it looks like she very accurately replicated what she did in studio. You can see their mouth is closed for that. Check that out one more time. Cool. Wow, it, it looks like it's about to end here, and I'm not I'm not okay with that yet. I, I'm gonna rewind it because we need to hear it a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I just a little callback here to these lyrics. Um, uh, it almost sounds like it's somebody who's in a, an ab abusive relationship. Not almost. It sounds like that for sure, and I understand um, that that uh, is something that can become very addicting. Luckily, I've never experienced that myself, but. Um, that uh, part of me thinks like, oh, I could extrapolate this and talk about like just the emotional wreck that you can become in relationships and the misery that you can put yourself through, especially, oh my goodness, if anybody uh, has ever been around most teenage girls, boy, boy, we can be so full of drama. So this that's what I was originally relating it to is kind of those early like, uh, years of romance and being tugged and like, oh, I'm going to cry so much because, because I don't know, he doesn't notice me. Um, but I think it can go much deeper than that. And certainly there's more experiences I've had like that too. Um, and I also want to shout out to the people that are uh, maybe experienced relationships that aren't uh, healthy at all, which sounds like this one probably isn't so much. Um, hey, there are people that can help. And you don't have to stay in the misery. But I believe that this really captures that feeling. And shout out to Lizzie and RJ and everybody that helped write this for capturing that feeling. I think that that's a really raw and vulnerable emotion to be able to actually pick up. And that's amazing that they could put it into a message so that people could relate to it and express it. That's so important. So, so extremely important. And she's able to bring the anger and the misery into it in her vocal tone quality, unlike any singer I've heard before. She sounds more angry than I think any female singer I've heard. It's just, it's absolutely insane. Her raw emotion's amazing. Okay, I'm babbling. We're going to go back and listen to some more. Okay, at the very end, oh, wow, that was a great extended scream at the end. Loved it, loved it. Um, also, she does a really interesting thing at the end where she does like an offset, um, which can be a great way to express more anger. 
I don't know if she did this on purpose. When you when you sing a song, uh, sing a note, and you give an almost gasp of air right afterwards, uh, and you have this like ah, right afterwards. It's a really great way to show that there's still more emotion built up inside. So check that last note. Out. That's a great offset. One more time. Now, okay, that offset isn't something that is very recommended in singing. Generally, it's, it puts more pressure and a little bit of abrasion, essentially, on the vocal folds. So you don't want to do it every time. That also creates an extra sound, which you don't want to do every time you release a note. But doing it in certain places as a way to almost extend that line further is really cool. And I, I definitely like hearing people use more sounds that their voice can make to express more emotion. Okay, one more time, back to the extended scream and a really cool offset. I love this layering. So cool. Ooh, that was good. Did not disappoint. That was uh, just riveting. Delightful to get to see how she makes all of these really, really cool sounds. I know this was a music video, but I was really glad to see that they peppered in her actually singing at the microphone for a lot of it. So I got to see more about how she makes those sounds. I loved getting to see the different mouth shapes and the way she makes it so toothy and snarly at times. Wow, she has got some of the fiercest sounds that I've heard from a female singer. I love that. I love the grit. I love the way she's able to take that throughout her range and keep it really continuous. I love the power behind her belt. It is solid, solid. I love the messaging in this song. I think that it really tugs at something that's just fundamentally human. And, oh man, yeah. I'm curious who the song is about. That was not actually in my prep work for this video. So if you know more about that, please post it below in the comments. And thank you to everyone who did recommend Hailstorm. This was just, it's delightful the right word. I don't think it is. Riveting. Uh, it got my blood pumping. There you go. Very exciting to hear. So thank you very much. Keep making recommendations, please, down below in the comments. We do cap those up. We tally them. And the ones that have the most recommendations, you'll see on this channel. And you can come and join me on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. Arizona time here on YouTube for live premieres. You can also find me on Patreon and at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you guys somewhere soon.